Alright, part two of my Buddha manga review. Hopefully this will be much shorter so I can kind of tease you with a little bonus I'll probably be actually putting together within the hour anyway, which is me actually, it's, it will have spoilers in it, so if you actually want to read the book and be surprised at stuff, don't listen to what uh, I'll be talking about in the part three. So part two will be the final uh spoiler free part of the review so if anything I enjoyed this series but I could say there might have been things that could have been added there could have been things that could have been improved but frankly I have really very little place to question uh, Tezuka's artistic licenses he took because if I was doing it frankly it would just be more I don't know, I'd, play, I'd place it in a completely different setting, I'd, you know, it wouldn't be in India anymore, so frankly, people would already, you know, shoot me in the foot, you know, crucify me, all sorts of nasty, terrible things they could uh, do to utterly uh, sodomize me, as the uh, common expression goes, although I don't like using that, because, you know, it's become much more common knowledge, Sodom was hardly bad are notorious for butt sex. It was notorious for being an asshole. Ironic, because they're kind of related, aren't they? Anyway, on to the uh, review and less about my uh, silly, blasphemous humor. Uh, let's see. If we're talking about favorite characters, or characters I thought that might not have been necessary, let's go with favorite characters. The presentation of Devadatta is very good because, I don't know, they always kind of, with, especially after he shaves his head, he always has a way of distinguishing. He's, he, he's, he's distinguished in how he's drawn, because apparently he didn't completely shave his head. He has little lines of his hair still left. And then the progression of Buddha, otherwise I'll just call him Siddhartha. It's actually much simpler to call him that. But the prog the progress that he has is very good, and not to mention it's very hard. It, it, rather, it was it was very hard for Tezuka to pres. Excuse me, it was very hard for him to present Buddha because he went through so many drastic changes. He was initially a pampered prince, then he was a you know bright faced monk, and then he was. Uh, he he to put it simply. He changes drastically. Then again, you can obviously tell from the pictures that I would be spoiling that, you know, in his old age, he gets pretty freaking decrepit looking to a certain extent, although he maintains a sense of nobility, you might say. But there are stages in his life where he gets pretty messed up, we'll say. Or it's pretty drastic, if anything. It's shocking. But a good shocking, you know. And if we're talking about historical accuracy... You know, don't. I wouldn't use this for a class. If I were a professor in the future, which I won't be, more than likely, I'll just be a blogger, or writer, or something like that. But if I was gonna vouch for the historical accuracy or historicity, if the word would be per permitted to be used by me, of this manga in relation to the story of Buddha, I wouldn't say this should be used for a class, except in terms of being popular culture, popular media, popular literature. Even though Tezuka himself was probably a Buddhist, if anything, I will say this much, he very much seems to portray Buddha as a simple reformer of Hinduism, which to an extent I wouldn't doubt he was. But if anything, if I would imagine Buddha is doing anything, I wouldn't necessarily imagine him as, you know, having this revelation or any significant conversations with uh, a you know bearded old man that is supposed to be representative of the shramana otherwise known as basically wandering monks that did ascetics and exercises and ordeals and otherwise punished themselves to try to release their soul from the corruption of their body supposedly to a certain extent or you might say he looks like a yoga yogi I'll have to let that in there. I'm not doing this again. 
that's a usual thing that happens during these freaking things. My freaking virus, uh, blah, 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 virus database updates. Anyway, but there are a lot of things that pretty much seem like he's trying to make Buddha seem a lot more Western friendly, which I guess, t to be fair, that's uh, me repeating the obvious because this manga is also mirrored i should have mentioned that in the other part but this thing is the pages are mirrored so you can't actually read this from right to left you read it from left to right uh which can actually make it tricky because when you mirror manga pages it's actually tricky to understand how the what order the speech bubbles actually are to be read in but in any case you know with all the potential inaccuracies aside like buddha saying Buddha sounding like a glorified uh, Hindu without the uh, caste system, or I don't know. It's yeah, it's almost like you're. Pre he's like he's really presenting Buddha in the same way. Say, um, an outsider might present Jesus as simply a rebellious Jewish rabbi, as opposed to what many people would regard as very separate from the Jewish religion, even though he's de it's dependent on the Jewish religion. In the same way, we do see many overtones of the Hindu religious practices that Buddha was raised in, and yet at the same time, we don't see a lot of separation from the Hindu religion that Buddha was supposedly very notorious in, or at least known for, you know, that you know, particularly the idea that we don't have a soul or anything that's, you know, permanent about us. But I can forgive him if only because he does, throughout many of the sermons that are presented in this thing, try to emphasize the impermanence. So while I, while he may be potentially inaccurate in presenting Buddha's ideas about the soul, since he does occasionally present people's souls as being pretty concrete, like, there's this essence of your soul that Buddha can draw out of the microcosm of the universe or something that you are and put it back into you as opposed, like, if you're separated from your body by poison or some other terrible thing, Buddha can put your soul back in your body, like some astral projection shit. I don't get it. But overall, this is a good series. I'm not going to knock it terribly. I would give it an... I would have to go with Silent Rob... And similarly to Final Fantasy VII, I give Buddha an 8. It's not a 10. It's an 8, or a 9 at best. It is a great series. I do recommend it, even with the high price. I mean, I had to pay probably half... Yeah, I had to pay half the price out of my own pocket. I got the other, the first four volumes for Christmas. Anyway, look forward to Part 3, where I will spoil things, but also reveal my ghettoized... Uh, webcam pictures of the paperback version of the covers of Buddha. Anyway, this is Muichimotsu, and I will see you later.